Hello everyone, it's Phil here with another tweak guide. We're tweaking Star Wars TIE Fighter the Collector CD version from GOG.com. Lots of stuff in this video. I'm going to show you how to tweak the DOSBox config file to have a nice image, great sound, correct aspect ratio and also the game running at the correct speed. There are some issues to do with the timing. We configured a game to use general MIDI. I'm going to have a chat to you about joysticks and how to map buttons. And at the end, I'm going to show you or attempt to create an installation CD and see if we can actually install the game from that CD in case you want to play it on a real retro gaming PC. But first, let's just run the game and see what it looks like. So this is the game straight after uh, installation. So the image is a little bit small. I'm aware that you can tweak the scaling also in the NVIDIA driver, but it's much better to let DOSBox do that. Music sound is definitely Sound Blaster. So joystick calibration works, that's good. And we're just gonna Enter your name, pilot. fly in the training simulator just to make sure that everything works fine. The game uses high resolution uh, 640 by 480 graphics, so it's quite quite nice compared to the pixelated DOS graphics. So that's all working well. Let's quit the game and then we're going to start start some tweaking. All right, let's go to DOS. Okay, let's start some tweaking. You need to go to your game folder and open the this config file here. I'm going to snap it to the left so I can still see my sticky notes. Now, just a note, if when you open your config file and it looks all garbled up, you can't see the individual paragraphs. This is because you probably ran um, this program here, DOSBox Configurator. Um, and I don't know, maybe it's something to do how they programmed it, but if you save any any settings here, it'll mess up your config file. Um, you've got two choices. You can either reinstall uh, the game and you get a fresh config file, or you can use uh, another editor like Notepad++. Okay, so full screen resolution. That's the native resolution of your monitor. That's different uh, to everyone out there. Mine is 1920 by 1080. So you enter that. Window resolution, if you want to play the game in window mode, set that to false. Um, or toggle between full screen and window resolution by pressing Alt Enter. 800 by 600 is a nice window size. Then we've got the output mode. There are three recommended options, OpenGL, OpenGL non-bilinear and direct draw. OpenGL gives you a nice consistent image slightly on the soft side but with low resolution text being easier to read. OpenGL non-bilinear direct draw give you a very pixel razor sharp image, um, but sometimes low resolution text is a bit hard to read and that's because the sizes of the individual pixels might differ a little bit. So OpenGL is the one I recommend and usually go in all of my tweak guides. Then make sure that aspect ratio is set to true. It's really good that GOG is starting to set that to true. In the past, a lot of the games were configured with false. This just avoids that the game is stretched in widescreen and round shapes are not round anymore. Um, so if, if it's set to true, you get the nice authentic 4 by 3 aspect ratio. We change that to normal 3x. Okay, let's have a look at the CPU cycle speed. This is quite interesting. The game came out in 1990. Five, and most people had a 486DX266, maybe a Pentium, up to a Pentium 133. That was pretty much the newest there. So the game using high resolution 640x480 graphics, uh, most people would have experienced the game a little bit uh, choppy, laggy, not as smooth as on, on, on today's computers. The game has a few timing issues with the turrets not firing if your processor is too fast. So a cycle speed of max is not recommended. Interestingly enough, if you download the game from the website, it will come with cycle speeds max. But if you download it through the new uh, GOG Galaxy, it will actually have a cycle speed of 60,000, which is much, much better, um, but not perfect. You might still have issues with the turrets not firing. Um, I found that a setting of 20,000 is <clears throat> pretty close on the level of a 486DX266, but the game will be quite laggy. So 
somewhere between uh, 20,000 and 60,000 is probably a good compromise between speed and not having the issues. Every computer is different, so you, you might have to experiment a little bit. I'm going to go with uh, 50,000 and let's see if that works. The good thing is during the game, just press Control F11 or Control F12 and you can dynamically increase and decrease the cycle speed. We're going to change the mixer sample rate to 48,000 and we're going to change the sound blaster sample rate also to 48,000. And now we're going to tweak the game to use general MIDI. What you need is one of these. This is CoolSoft Virtual MIDI Synth. It's a virtual MIDI device and you need sound fonts. And I'm going to put some links in where you can download all this stuff. And I'll try to use a different sound font in each of my videos just to mix it up a little bit. Today we're using the Arachno sound font. So that's all done. And then we need to find out what MIDI config number the device has. So we go to our folder here into DOSBox. We run DOSBox and we're going to type in the command mixer slash list MIDI. That will give us a list of all the MIDI devices on our computer. So I've got a few. I've got the M232 emulator, bass, uh, bass MIDI, and also the CoolSoft Virtual MIDI Synth. And this is the default one. I believe that the CoolSoft Virtual MIDI Synth installs itself as the uh, main uh, MIDI device, which is great. So usually you don't have to actually put that setting in. But I also I always recommend that you double check. So put a zero in there. Just going to save this in the meantime. And the other thing we need to do is now configure the game to use General MIDI. So you go here, all programs, and you find your Star Wars game and you run the launch settings menu. Then you go install, set up sound card, press the C key for custom and click on the advanced menu. Okay, so speech is working. And we're going to test the music. That's also working, but we're going to change that to general MIDI port 330. Then we press quit. Yes. And exit. And we're back here and that's it for the sound so the only thing we now need to talk about is the joystick down here oh, where is it down here yeah um, if you want to use the hat to look around we need to go with the FCS for the uh, Thrustmaster and I had some issues with timed false so I'm gonna set that to true um, you just have to experiment between uh, true and false and whether or not which one works you might get a joystick drift or some other issues um, true worked for me fine so let's save this and i believe that's all it is joystick recommendations um, i've got two models i've got one from logitech and one from uh, thrustmaster i'm gonna put in um, images of those so you see uh, which ones i have and they work really well with dustbox okay we're done here so we can run the game and then I'm going to show you how to map the buttons to the joystick. So now we've got a nice full screen image with the correct 4 by 3 aspect uh, ratio. my joystick Enter your name, pilot. okay here we are so you might be able to tell that the game is already a little bit uh, choppy and not as smooth as before but that's that's really the the issue with the cycle speed and, and finding a good uh, compromise I'm just gonna slow my ship down so we're not flying anymore to get the dos box mapper you have to press ctrl f1 and i'm just gonna mute the music because the uh, midi gets stuck here okay so let's map some keys let's map the hat first so this is the 
by pressing Control F1, you get the, the mapper. So let's map the four to my left hat. So you click on the button first, then add, and then you push the hat to the left side. Now do the same thing with the number six, add, push the hat to the right, press eight, add, push the hat forward, press two, add, and push the hat backwards. Um, I'm also gonna show you how to map a few other keys, for example, the X key, which will change the uh, configuration of the laser. Press add, I'm, I'm just gonna press, uh, choose one of the buttons on the base of my stick for X, and let's also use um, one for the weapons, another button here, okay. And I'm just gonna show you what you can do with the throttle. So the joystick has a throttle. Unfortunately, the game does not really support the analog throttle of the stick, but we can kind of trick it to use the throttle. So set the throttle on your joystick halfway through, then press the plus key, click add, and then slowly push your throttle forward. Return it back to the halfway setting, press the minus key, add, and slowly pull your throttle backwards. And that's it, press the save button and exit. And we have a look how everything looks and play. I'm just gonna turn the music back on. So I can now modify the speed with the throttle. It's not ideal, it's kind of like digital. Yeah, if you pull it forward, it just simulates pressing plus and it will actually continue doing so. So you have to return it back to the center. But it's better than nothing. It's 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 it is it just is what it is. Yeah. Um, what else we do? Hat. We can now look forward, left. Let me just fly in here so we can actually see something. So backwards, to the right, forward. So the hat is actually working well. And by pressing W. Okay, I haven't got any other weapons yet, but that works. And I can press X. To link my lasers or unlink them but that's it that's working really well and I'm just gonna now quit the game okay so now comes the last part I'm gonna check if the game um, can be installed on a retro gaming PC. And the way I approach this, I have a look at this other config file here, where it mounts a virtual, uh, an image of virtual CD drive here. Yeah? So it's referring to the game.ins file. So we're gonna have a look at that. Here it is, let's open it. And uh, this is a Q sheet. So the CD that's supplied with the game is actually in the bin and Q format. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these two files and you see how it refers to game.gog. So I'm gonna grab these two files and just gonna put them on my, put a copy on my desktop. So we open that file again. And the first thing we need to do is we're gonna rename this file to dot bin. And we also change this reference to dot bin. And we save it. And rename this file to game.q. And now just use a CD burning tool to burn that image file onto a disk. And I'll do that and I'll do a little cut in the video and we have a look how that CD played. Okay, here we are. So this is the burned disk and we've got an install here and some other files. So my uh, computer lab at the moment is just going through some reorganization. So I can't test this on a real machine, but I'm just gonna use uh, Defend Reloaded, which is basically a DOSBox front end uh, to test that disk. So I'm just gonna create a new profile. Now, I've got to go through all these uh, settings like before. So we're going to go with 
50,000 for the CPU. Graphics, we're going to use Windows Resolution 800, 600, 1920, 1080. Keep aspect ratio, we're going to go with OpenGL and Scalar. 3x um, sound we're going to change the mixer sample rate to 48,000 the sound blaster sample rate to 48,000 under MIDI um, device ID is zero you can press this button here and it does it it does it for you so ID is zero that's all good Joystick uh, timed intervals, joystick type FCS, and the other thing we need to do, I um, need to map my disk drive. Let's have a look, CD drive, and I think that's it. Okay, let's run it. Okay, so that disk drive didn't work. Let me just check my drive letter. Um, it is it is D here. So add CD drive. Okay, mount physical drive. Okay. That should be it. Okay, let's run install and see if this is a proper installation CD. So we go for maximum install. Hi CD, yep. Okay, here we're going to configure our sound card. Go to the advanced menu, digital sound. We've got a sound blaster 16. Let's just go with detect. There it is. And music, general MIDI 30. Let's test that all. That's all ready to go. So yeah, full installation CD is supplied. That is beautiful. So those interested in playing this on a real uh, retro gaming PC, just follow my instructions to burn the installation disc and you can enjoy this on a real retro gaming PC. Ah, interesting. It's got some different um, options here. Not sure what this is about. Just gonna create a new one for myself. And otherwise the game will probably play exactly like the one from GUG. Okay, good. So let's just quit here. And that's it for this tweet guide. Thanks for watching. As always, hit the like button. 
Leave me any questions, comments down below. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. And that's it. Thank you for watching.